Former President Donald Trump's classified documents case in Florida has been postponed indefinitely. You may remember that original trial date was set for May 20th. Judge Eileen Cannon, citing significant issues around classified evidence, says she would need to be says that would need to be worked out before the federal criminal case goes to a jury. Our Scott McFarland and Jessica Levinson join us now. Scott, talk to us about why the judge issued this ruling today. There was an anticipation this trial date was written in invisible ink in the first place. The prospect of a May trial seemed far-fetched because the docket is just saturated with legal challenges from the Trump team and these complex classified records issues that are unique to this case because it's about the alleged mishandling and exposure of America's classified secrets. What the judge has said here in this five-page ruling is there are these intertwined issues involving the legal challenges and the classified records issues that it's just not tenable to have a trial in May or to set a firm trial date at all right now, which raises the prospect, if not the likelihood, this trial would happen well after the 2024 election, which means if Donald Trump were to win, this trial might not happen at all. It's the same dynamic impacting that January 6, 2020 election conspiracy trial here in Washington. The delays raise the prospect a trial might not happen if Donald Trump wins the presidency. Not a big surprise, but a pretty definitive ruling today from Judge Eileen Cannon, who it's worth underscoring, was appointed to the bench by Donald Trump. Mm. And Jessica, can you explain more of that ruling, more of her reasoning about why she came to this decision? So exactly as Scott said in his fine reporting that she said there's just a lot of evidentiary issues to sort out. And she is pointing to the fact that we're talking about some concerns about national security. And that does raise additional questions for any judge when they're overseeing a trial like this. Having said that, I'm not aware of a situation where, or I should say it's quite uncommon, where a judge says, you know, this is just really tricky. So let's just take it off of the calendar completely. We certainly have seen delays. We've seen delays from this judge. We've seen delays from other judges. That's appropriate. And that's not unusual. But to have a judge say, this is a tough one. There's just so much to sort through. Let's put it off and not set any additional deadline. That, I think, for people watching at home is interesting and rare because typically when it comes to trials, everything is keyed to that trial date. So you set the trial date, even if you know in the beginning of a case that it's aspirational, and then everything works back from that trial date. So taking it off calendar, which is really what she's done, is quite significant here. Did she offer any explanation other than that it would be a lot of work? Uh, well, I think not just a lot of work, but what she's saying is that it's a lot of really tricky and complex work. And part of this is, frankly, that the former president, again, as Scott mentioned, filed lots and lots of motions. So she does have a lot to go through in this case. Now, having said that, um, there are cases where there is a very heavy and aggressive motion practice. And I still haven't seen a situation where the judge says, the best thing to do is take it off calendar. Now, I think what would have been, frankly, um, in my mind, perhaps more expected and or frankly, I think appropriate would be some sort of significant delay. Because again, if you keep that trial date, at least you are keying decisions and motions to some date certain in the future, even if it has to keep getting pushed back. And Scott, I imagine for the Trump campaign, their main line was whether this was going to happen before or after the presidential election. So is this a win for them? Well, if their M.O. is to delay, 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 which it seems to be, this is exactly what they'd be hoping for, an indefinite delay, as Jessica said, not even a new date. There's just no date any longer. All that being said, of the two special counsel prosecutions, the one in Florida over classified records and the one here in Washington over alleged election subversion, it's the latter, the election case that was built for speed. It was narrow. There are no co-defendants. There are only four charges. They don't even get deeply into the issues of January 6th. And they've made that case more elastic, more flexible. And that case has been stalled, too. There was not much of an aspiration from those 
who have been monitoring the case in Florida, that it was going to go first or it was going to go early. There was this sense it was going past the election anyhow, which allows for a possible silver lining for Jack Smith. It allows him to marshal his attention and his resources towards the case here in Washington if, Ouija, the Supreme Court releases that case back to the court. You'll recall they're reviewing the issue of presidential immunity with a ruling not likely till late June. It's not clear there's enough time to have a trial before the election in Washington, but stalling the Florida case at least gives the special counsel the ability to focus his attention on Washington if that case does get the trial before November. So Jessica, what happens now? I mean, especially since we don't have an alternate date. So what happens now is that the judge has indicated that she'll keep working on these issues, but the, let's be honest, we're not having a trial uh, before the election. I mean, that was sure beforehand, but it is absolutely certain now. Um, you know, Scott mentioned the other federal case, the election interference case, and he's exactly right that we're waiting on the Supreme Court when it comes to this question of whether or not a former president enjoys some, none, or complete immunity from criminal prosecution. We're also waiting on a separate case I would offer from the Supreme Court about whether the obstruction statute that Jack Smith used as part of the charges in that federal election interference case, if that statute even applies to the activities of January 6. So what happens now is that we continue to look at the New York hush money trial as, frankly, I think the only trial that's going forward before the election. And depending on what happens in the election, potentially the only trial that moves forward at all. Because for the two federal cases, if Trump wins the election, he can ask his attorney general to dismiss them. A judge would still have to agree. For the state case, he would make different arguments, but he would say that a state criminal trial proceeding against him as the head of the federal executive branch would create separation of powers concerns. So everything kind of slows down, frankly, at this moment while we wait for the Supreme Court and we watch the continuation of the hush money trial. There are so many trials. There are so many developments. And we are grateful to you, Jessica Levinson and Scott McFarlane, for making sense of them for us. Thank you.